Hello, and it's welcome live. to Starting Conversations. I'm your host, Ken Watt, for the New Mexico Humanities Council, and thanks for joining us. Before we begin, I want to remind our viewers that you can join our program, and we hope you will, um, by using the chat function on your Zoom page and uh, to communicate with me and my co-host, Matt Garcia Sierra. I'm Ken Watt for the New Mexico Humanities Council. Thank you for joining us. I am thrilled today to introduce our guests, poet Elizabeth Jacobson and Jerry Wellman, co-founder of Axel Contemporary in Santa Fe. Elizabeth Jacobson, originally from New York, has lived for over 30 years in New Mexico. She received an MFA from Columbia University in creative writing and a BA from Rollins College in English literature. She's the author most recently of Not Into the Blossoms and Not Into the Air, three verse editions, Parlor Press in 2019, which won the New Measure of Poetry Prize collected by Marianne Baruch and the 2019 New Mexico Arizona Book Award for both New Mexico Poetry and Best New Mexico Book. Baruch writes, genuine curiosity fuels this book and can we bear it a true savoring of the world. Elizabeth Jacobson starts in clarity and ends in mystery, two points of imaginative departure. Beware and rejoice. This is how a very original brain thinks itself into poems. Jacobson's other books include a full-length collection, Her Knees Pulled In from Tres Chicas Books in 2012, and two chapbooks from Dancing Girl Press, Are the Children Make-Believe in 2017, The Brown Stone in 2015. She's the founding director of the Wingspan Poetry Project, a not-for-profit, which since 2013 has conducted weekly poetry classes in battered family and homeless shelters in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Wingspan has received four grants from the Witter Binner Foundation for Poetry and Community Partners Award from the Esperanza Shelter for Battered Families. She's the reviews editor for the online literary journal terrain.org and teaches poetry workshops regularly in the Santa Fe community. In July 2019, Jacobson was appointed Poet Laureate for the city of Santa Fe. Jerry Wellman is a Santa Fe-based artist whose cultural work includes curatorial projects, performance, writing, video, and studio production. Wellman's paintings and drawings have been exhibited at the Brooklyn Museum of Art, Holly Solomon Gallery in New York City, Pierogi Gallery in Brooklyn, the Downey Museum, the Orange County Center of Contemporary Art in California, the El Paso Museum of Art, the Revolving Museum in Boston, and the Paseo Project in Taos, New Mexico. His drawings were selected for a traveling show sponsored by the Smithsonian. His work with Axel Contemporary, which he is a co-founder of, has been exhibited at Site Santa Fe, 516 Arts in Albuquerque, the Navajo Muse Nation Museum in Window Rock, Arizona, the Western Heritage Museum in Hobbs, New Mexico, and the Roswell Arts Center in Roswell, New Mexico. Awards of note include Art Matters Foundation Grant, a Line Grant, a Puffin Grant, and a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts. Wellman has taught at the Pasadena College of Art and Design, Cal Arts, and New Mexico State University. He was formerly the head curator at Los Angeles Institute of Contemporary Art and as I mentioned, he's the co-founder and co-creator and co-curator of Axel Contemporary Art Space, which we'll be hearing a little bit more about soon. Thank you both for joining us. Thank You're you. Welcome. Our pleasure. So we have a lot to cover. Thank you all in the audience for, for joining us. As you know, this is a Zoom room and we all know what that is by now. You are able to chat and communicate with us um, my, myself or my host, Matt Garcia Sierra, by using the chat function in the bottom of your screen. And a little bit later on, we'll take some questions and thoughts from you, the audience, uh, which you can do with the reaction button uh, by raising your hand and we can put your faces right on our live screen and have a conversation uh, with our guests. So 
I'm going to start um, by uh, asking Elizabeth to tell us a little bit about what it means to be the Poet Laureate of Santa Fe, what that represents, and to introduce a joint project that she and Axel Contemporary are working on this year. Hi, everyone. Thank you for um, tuning in. Thank you, Ken, for that lovely introduction. It's great to be here. Um, and thank you uh, to everyone from the New Mexico Humanities Council and to my partner, uh, uh, one of the, um, of the co-founders and uh, directors of Axel Contemporary, Jerry Wellman. So um, uh, uh, what does it mean to be Poet Laureate? I, I think for me, um, it's a great opportunity to raise awareness in uh, the community of Santa Fe, which is the capital city uh, of New Mexico, as we know, and um, to uh, reach deeper into uh, the community in areas where I haven't worked before. Um, I have worked, um, a part of the first um, project I did as Poet Laureate last June through uh, the fall is I taught 14 um, community poetry classes through the Rail Yard Art Project, well, in conjunction with the Rail Yard Art Project. And they supported the project and it was really great. And this was for adults um, in the community. Although teenagers were welcome, um, I, I don't think anybody, any teenagers came, but we had about uh, 70 to 80 people that uh, came through the 14 classes. And then uh, in that uh, time uh, and, and in that uh, participation, we had about uh, 30 course, um, participants who came most weeks. So it was really lively. And so that was one way um, I served as Poet Laureate. And now um, this project, um, for me, another important um, aspect of being a Poet Laureate or working in the community is to dispel the myth that poetry is um, something to be afraid of or too academic, uh, not for everyone. I really think poetry can be an everyday adventure for anyone and with a few tools um, that is totally possible and um, working now in with teenagers. So we've had, well, I'll explain the project and we've had to change quite a bit uh, because of the COVID restrictions, but we're moving forward and it, it's working out quite well. Um, what it is, is that um, I will be teaching poetry workshops. Uh, originally, I was supposed to be going into many different high schools with um, uh, other uh, local poets uh, also teaching. So, uh, and then we were going to be bringing poet, uh, teenagers from all over the different uh, high schools in the different areas of Santa Fe to youth works. And uh, YouthWorks is another partner in this project. Uh, YouthWorks is a fabulous organization. If you don't know it, please uh, look it up. And uh, they provide over 9,000 meals for homeless and um, people in need in Santa Fe uh, a week. And they also have an arts education program because they employ uh, teenagers um, and uh, work with teenagers and support teenagers uh, in their um, in their, in their lives. And so um, anyway, so there are also our, um, uh, our partner. And um, then, uh, and then uh, we were gonna, we are going to, uh, they have a screen printing studio, excuse me, at YouthWorks and that's part of the organization. So what we're doing essentially is uh, teaching, I'm teaching poetry classes. Now it's gonna be online or in parks. I've already started teaching in, in parks outside. Um, and then the uh, teenagers are gonna have one finished poem. They're gonna select a line or a phrase from their poem, which they will design uh, and it will be printed for them or they will be involved in the printing process. Hopefully that was the intention uh, to um, print their line or phrase on t-shirts. Uh, then with these t-shirts, they're going to photograph themselves or each other. Uh, and so then at the, uh, then we're gonna have uh, finished poems, we're gonna have finished t-shirts and we're gonna have finished portraits. And we're going to be uh, producing an anthology through Axel's uh, publishing venue. And we're going to be having a group show um, at the um, community gallery of framed portraits and poems, uh, readings and um, uh, book signings and all that will will also be part of the project. So Jerry, uh, what have I left out? <laughs> well, you said that 
as if it only took, you know, three minutes for us to put this whole thing together. <laughs> yes, what you left out was hours and hours of going back and forth and figuring it out and honing it and making it uh, what I, and it apparently is becoming a, a wonderful project and I can hardly wait for it to get off the ground and to actually physically see it. The book's going to be wonderful. The the show is going to be great. The t-shirts, everything about this project. I'm very excited about it. We um, we like to work with different groups of people to see what what can happen when you mix groups together, like a you know a good meal. And um, I think working with Youth Works and working with Elizabeth. I see that a little thing said unstable. Maybe I blurred out a little bit. But anyways, working with Youth Works and working with Elizabeth and working with a community gallery, it's all coming together really, really nice. That's great. I, I, I can't wait to hear more, see more about the project and hope to be able to make it, make it to Santa Fe um, to join those. Jerry. Um, provided me with a wonderful video that, that, that is a great introduction to the work of, of Axel. Jerry, do you want to say a few words before I show it, um, or should I show it first and then invite you to comment on it? Well, I, what I, the one thing that might be of interest is that video represents what we do, what we have accomplished, uh, and what we did just in one year. We've wow. been doing this. We've been doing this for ten years, so I wanted to make the video pretty quick, and otherwise it could be a little bit much. So that's the one thing I want to point out to you, I think the video explains a lot. But okay. Perhaps you have questions afterwards. Go ahead and run it. I'm going to show this video because I am. I really want to be part of Axel and and drive around in an art van like this. So I'm going to. I'm going to um, see if I can actually share this without losing my screen. Hmm. Audio. <laughs> mm. That's great. You were no audio. There's no audio. Is that not just the coolest thing? Don't you all want to run away and join the art van? I, I just think that is uh, I am I'm getting a little bit of audio interference here. I hope everybody was able to hear the audio of the video and to hear the audio. Uh, there was no 
audio on the video. There was no audio on the video? No. Okay. All right. Well, I'm sorry that that didn't share correctly then. And so, Jerry, I'm going to ask you to retrospectively give us a flavor of what we missed by not being able to hear. Flavor of what we missed by not being able to hear. Sorry, I'm, can you can you hear me? Sorry, yes. Arthur shaking his head. Yes. To be the title for our project. Can you be the title for our project? Yeah, I. We never gave it a name. Are aren't we loving the the vagaries of Zoom? Isn't this just? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to, if you can hear me, Jerry, could you, could you tell us a little bit about the, uh, the founding, the original impulse? We and, uh, how you came up with the idea? I'm getting besieged by audio feedback here. So. Are you um, hearing me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. One suggestion I have is you could edit that um, that video back into this conference when you put this on YouTube, and then people could hear the audio. Well, we will do that for sure. Thank you. Uh, so, you uh, mentioned wanting to know something about the origins of Axel. And basically, it's a couple of friends hanging out uh, with our favorite drug, that being coffee. Um, and Matthew came, he was working on a project about uh, uh, doing top photographs of artists in their own environment. And so while he was taking the photographs, we got to talking about some ideas that we had. One was, uh, he had seen a beautiful old truck that uh, with a flatbed on it um, that he wanted. To, he was trying to figure out what cool thing could be done with this 1940s era truck. I had a little casita trailer, which I was thinking of going out and turning into a small miniature gallery. So at any rate, we both thought we had a pretty cool idea. And, and work together to come up with this idea using um uh right so this we found a beautiful step van which actually was once owned by uh elvis impersonator which i think for some reason is important maybe more important it was a bread delivery truck so at any rate that would be a subjective uh, origin. I would say objectively an origin might be the circus or gypsy wagons or Chautauqua shows or a reaction to a very famous essay from the 1970s about the white cube. Mm -hmm. Basically the white cube is a gallery or a museum and the thought what occurred to us is that youngsters love art. They love it. They love making it. They love looking at it. In an essay, they point out that as we get older, we are intimidated by the white cube, the museum, for a very, uh, for various reasons. And we thought by turning uh, an old step van into an art exhibition space, we might surmount the problems of the white cube and thereby also get the art out there to a lot of people who, for one reason or another, are intimidated by museums. So I guess that's kind of the origin story. I hope you got to hear all that. Hi, everyone. Um... I'm Matt Garcia Sieta with the New Mexico hey, Council. Hi. Uh, and the Jerry's audio is not working. So I'm just going to go. Jerry's audio is not working.
Folks, I'm sorry we're having a lot of audio problems today, but this has become part of the uh, endemic mystery of ongoing life on Zoom. We're doing the best we can. Um, we will keep working on that. Thank you, Matt. That was Matt Garcia Sierra, my, my co-host. Um, why don't we pivot to Elizabeth's video and audio? Uh, Elizabeth seems to be the model of audio video stability in our midst right now. And <laughs> could I and uh, could I perhaps invite you, Elizabeth, to share a poem with us? Um, maybe tell us when it was written, where it comes from, where we can find it, and we'll talk a little bit about that and try to come back to the joint project and the work of Axel. Sure, thank you. Um... Ken, uh, this, I'm going to read a poem called Blood Moon, and it's from my uh, most recent book, uh, Not Into the Blossoms and Not Into the Air. Um, it's available from uh, the press, which is Parlor Press. It's available from bookstores, anywhere that you order books, uh, it can be ordered. So thank you for asking me that. Um, anyway, this poem uh, remembers Matthew Shepard a young man who was murdered in 1998 in Wyoming. Um, I'm not exactly sure uh, when I wrote it, but I remember it was uh, around the anniversary of uh, his murder and I was thinking about uh, him and hate crimes. And uh, so anyway, this poem came out of that kind of thought. It's called Blood Moon, Echoes of a Hate Crime. People are made of paper, love affairs, anything that tears easily. A pregnant woman stands under the lunar eclipse, carves a swirl into a tree. Her baby is born with this same mark on his thigh. It's just like the earth to come between the sun and the moon and cause this kind of mystery, point at a rainbow, and it will plummet and slice your finger off. Use your lips instead to show others what you are looking at. Don't stand on high rocks or they will push you into the sky and you will be pressed like a flower in a book. People are made from rain showers, hatred, smears of spit, anything that might evaporate instantly. That night, the moon was a true blood red, not the pale rust of this moon this morning. An entire human body coated red with blood, except where a pair of tears washed through. Don't stare at the moon or it will follow you persistently like a stray cat you have fed. Don't hold out your hands when the sun is shining or you will burn continually with possibility. People are made of buckets of sand, sequins of clay, desire, anything that washes away easily. Don't inhale too deeply the scent of fallen leaves pasted to the forest floor after a fresh rain, or you will be repeatedly stepped on. Don't count the seeds in a mound of bear scat or just as many clouds will split open above your head. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. That's really powerful. Uh, really powerful words about, uh, uh, and, and unfortunately in, in so many difficult ways, very, very memorable moment in cultural history. Uh, Theater fans may remember the project, the Laramie Project, which was written in response to the Matthew Shepard um, incidents in Colorado. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Oh, you're welcome, Ken. My pleasure. Um, it seems like our audio's perhaps stabilizing a little bit. So why don't we pivot back and talk a little bit more about um, art as social action and what it is that the two of you hope you'll be able to do with your participants in Santa Fe and what you'd like audiences um, as well as the participants to take away from it. How does the project respond to the present moment? 
all the difficulties we're having like today with communication and technology. And what, uh, what do you think you're offering spiritually, philosophically uh, that's unique? I'm fascinated by it. Tell us more. Uh, I think, um, like I already said uh, about um, the uh, offering this project uh, to uh, work with and reach high school teenagers. So uh, that's how we conceived of the project. And um, fortunately, we're able to continue moving forward that way. And uh, to me, it seemed like an area of uh, the community that might be neglected. Uh, generally, it usually is in communities. And so um, as a mother of two, uh, not teenagers anymore, but remembering very well what it was like to be a teenager, um, I understand what it was like for them to be a teenager. I, I, I understand, um, you know, I think kind of how to work with teenagers. And so uh, maybe in a way, just go about it as if it's not any sort of special task, but just kind of an ordinary situation. And here's a poem and let's read it together. And uh, right now, uh, uh, the theme actually for the project and um, what I've been uh, teaching uh, are love poems and odes. And so uh, that to me seemed like an upbeat way to um, uh, reach uh, teenagers and to um, have them enjoy poetry. And I've chosen a wide, uh, diverse um, selection of poems from uh, writers from mostly contemporary, but also from, um, you know, uh, writers that are uh, maybe more recently dead and also um, from uh, writers that would be more um, known like Pablo Neruda. Um, and also um, another thing that I wanted to say is that um, as, a, um, as a point of social action, uh, I think uh, to work with the community um, and to, um, move into the community and engage uh, different parts of the community, like, uh, like how I've done in the past with my different work, especially with the Wingspan Poetry Project, um, is a way to activate, um, you know, light up different areas um, of Santa Fe and, and, and kind of connect, you know, you connect the lights. And so everything's uh, glowing together and I really like uh, I really, uh, really love working um, with different people uh, in the community this way. So, Jerry, what do you think? Jerry, can you hear me? No. Did I never unmute? Oh no. Okay. Can you can you hear us, Jerry? Are you? I, the host has to unmute me. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Axel's been, since the get go, basically very interested in how to build community, how to build a community to itself. And this project is doing that. I can't hear you at all. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah. What's that? Um, not hearing me? Are you hearing me or no? Now, but not oh, when you talk, in a sentence it breaks up. Well, I'll try again. Um, Axel has always been involved in trying to build community. And we feel as though the best way to build community is to reveal to each other what it is, what it is we do and how we feel about that. That is the arts and humanities experience. Um, and you're not hearing me? Breaking up too much. Uh, Breaking up too much. Oh, gosh. That's so sorry, Jerry. I wish there was yeah, something so I, sorry, could, I could do on my was... end. Well, one thing I can add to that is that um, social action um, often leads to uh, social justice work. Um, and so that is very rewarding as well.
Hi, Elizabeth. You were you got a little a little bit garbled audio um, at the end of what you were just saying too. Can you can you? Oh, I think just a little bit? that um, that social action work often leads to um, social justice uh, or you know elements of social justice, and so uh, they're very compatible in that respect. And um, I, I could talk a few minutes about wingspan if you'd like me to. I would love. I would love to hear more about wingspan. Thanks. And can you hear important... me okay? Right now we can. Who knows what it'll be in 30 seconds, but let's, <laughs> let's give it a try. Uh, I started the Wingspan Poetry Project in uh, 2013. And uh, the idea was uh, to uh, for me to go uh, teach a weekly poetry class in local in a local shelter. I started with the Esperanza Shelter for Battered Families in their uh, living facility. They also have a support center which is separate and, and they and we have and we worked with the support center as well. Um, but in 2013 when I started it was it was just me and uh, it was uh, so rewarding um, that uh, it was and this is our uh, it was and this is our um, is, uh, is uh, empowerment through poetry and that's exactly what happened. Uh, I worked intimately with usually a small group of women uh, who were at the time, you know, um, there for, uh, you know, a few days or weeks or months. And I would never know who would turn up uh, week to week, but there was a continuum uh, because uh, there was word of mouth and a few women from the week prior would be in the following week and, 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 and then their friends would come and so on. So it never felt um, like I was starting over each week which was really nice and surprising. Uh, and it's amazing that um, I could uh, just bring some poems. We could read the poems together and discuss them. And I could invite the women to write a poem and they would do that. And they did it so beautifully and eloquently and then shared their work, which also, um, uh, you know, which I, I, they formed close relationships with each other in a way that might not have been possible if we hadn't been in a group working and talking about and writing and sharing poems. So um, anyway, uh, the project uh, has stopped now uh, because of COVID and uh, we were supported uh, by, uh, for four years by the Witter Binner Foundation for Poetry, which we were incredibly grateful for. And um, after the first year or so, I had several other women poets uh, join and uh, we ended up uh, when we closed, uh, you know, couldn't work in shelters anymore uh, starting in the spring. Uh, there were five of us uh, that had worked, you know, in the Wingspan Poetry Project over the years. And do you, do you imagine that you'll be able to pick up the project again once we get past this immediate uh, health crisis? Or? Possibly, I think we would probably wait until um, uh, next uh, spring if we were going to continue and it just depends. Um, I think that it actually for me might change into something else, but I'm not quite sure yet. So um, I hope so, um, but it, it's really amazing work. And um, we, we worked in almost all the facilities in Santa Fe um, several under the St. Elizabeth uh, umbrella organization, the men's shelter, uh, St. Elizabeth's men's shelter, and um, the St. Elizabeth's uh, La Familia, and uh, again, as I mentioned, the Esperanza Shelter for Battered Families and their support center. So we also worked um, at youth shelters and a few other programs under the St. Elizabeth uh, umbrella. So uh, we, you know, we met a lot of people. We, and we keep a blog. Um, this is our logo. Um, and uh, this is a chapbook that we produced uh, of poems for the project over the years. Uh, I, this really isn't available anywhere, but, but the Wingspan Poetry Project um, is online, uh, wingspanpoetryproject.wordpress.com. And the blog is there, all the information about Wingspan and the um, a, a stream of uh, poems that we, would collect and type and publish on the blog, which was a um, service that we offered to the women, which who they re they really liked that, so they could share with their friends and and share with each other, um, and that is all available. 
uh, I think um, oh, there was something else I was going to mention, but I can't remember. So, oh well. Elizabeth, um, what was that website again? Wingspan Poetry Project. Yes, uh, Wingspan Poetry Project. Wordpress. Uh, because we, uh, it's a free blog from WordPress. Okay, I'm sending it to everyone in the group. Project, who, who the teachers are, um, what we do. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I know, well, we know Jerry's audio is a little wonky right now, but before he got on air with us, um, he was telling us about, I don't know if you can share a little bit about it, but, or maybe Ken might, might have picked up on it. Um, he had said that he has some artwork or a flag in New York City okay. right now. Um, I don't know if you know, if you know anything about it, can you share it with us? Uh, Jerry's flag is uh, over Rockefeller Center, I think, right now in New York City. And it's a flag that uh, symbolizes um, community and connectivity and uh, that all of our problems, it represents that all of the human problems we have can be solved. Um, and I can't remember what he said, uh, in a sort of a simple way. Um, I, Jerry, can you hear me? <laughs> what, what was that last part? Try again, Jerry. Anyway, connectivity was the big, um, the big focus of the flag. <laughs> Coexistence was the, at the heart of the uh, idea of the, of the piece. And um, yes, it is about both um, understanding who you are as a person through self actualization, along with community, and how to manifest that, and how community uh, brings us all together, too, and how that they work together. And in that working together, I believe that the solutions are all possible. And that's what the, this abstract flag represented. And um, I, it's on my Facebook feed, but uh, maybe we could uh, get it on my, uh, I could send it along later. In any case, it sounds like a blessing to our many friends back in New York City. <laughs> Okay, well, we, I'm afraid we missed most of that, but I think we got a little bit of the rest of it from Jerry's words. Um, Matt, did you have, were there any questions or comments that have come in? Yeah, um, a question for Elizabeth. Uh, uh, we heard about a fellowship that you you just received or, or your organization received. Um, can you share that, share a bit about that with us? Yeah, um, thank you. I, I'd be really happy to. Um, I'm, I'm just so uh, grateful and, uh, uh, you know, happy that we were, we, um, it's, uh, um, what it is, it's from the Academy of American Poets and it's a, 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 a Poets Laureate Fellowship and uh, they have been uh, funded by the Mellon Foundation for this grant. And this year it was given to 23 poets laureate across the country. So I applied for this fellowship in January, at the end of January, I believe the dead, uh, was the deadline uh, for our project or with our project. Um, and, um, and we received the fellowship. So um, it's a large grant and it will fund our project. And in addition to that, um, and you can look on the Academy of American Poets website, it's poets.org. Um, you can also sign up for a poem a day through that organization. It's a great way to familiarize yourself with contemporary po poetry. Uh, they send out a poem in your email every day. Um, and it's a great uh, diversity of poets. Um, and anyway, uh, w along with this fellowship, YouthWorks received a matching 
uh, $10,000 in kind. Um, they, uh, they made a $10,000 in kind um, match. And for that match, they have received a $10,000 donation uh, also from the Academy of American Poets. So that will fund uh, their portion of the project, the screen printing, um, the t-shirts, and uh, there's a whole um, bunch of other things that, that they'll be doing uh, that will cover that, um, that fellowship, that grant for them. So uh, that was really exciting uh, that they received that as well. Amazing. Matt, was there another, did you have another question? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, so we have a request from David. He would like to know, I don't know if you have one handy, uh, but he'd like to know if you can read another poem uh, for the group. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I'd, <laughs> like to read, one up on the spot. <laughs> I'd like to read this poem. Um, it's called Osprey. It, it's also from this book. And um, if there's time before we close, I'll read a new poem, but uh, I think this poem um, is uh, pertinent. It's, uh, we, in fact, we saw an osprey yesterday, so uh, we don't see them very often, um, but uh, in the Nature Conserve, there's a pond um, and it's stocked with some kind of fish that somebody put in there years ago. They're, I don't think they were supposed to, probably carp, but the osprey who lives around here knows it and um, anyway, uh, it's called Osprey. This morning, waking from long voluptuous sleep, I felt my life warm to this warming world and then fall away. The ledge not crump, excuse me, the ledge not crumbled beneath me, but pulled back as I stood at its edge, like that tablecloth trick where the settings remain in place, all my pieces intact as I fell through the pine tops, my mind loosening its language, the first to salute the velocity. With my feet still on the granite, I looked up to see an osprey flying just overhead, a trout secure in its talons, the fish's tail swimming through the wind. I saw the yellow glint of its scales, the flesh torn from a struggle. Then, as if magic, a drop of cool blood in my hair. Amazing, wonderful. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, I am thinking about the days when I tried to begin to write poetry in college and how Wallace Stevens blew my mind and I, have to ask, who are the poets that began to inspire you when you were writing, first writing, and who continues to? Well, I, you know, when I, when I first started writing, uh, I think um, it was the, the poetry world was a lot smaller, and um, we were studying in college, uh, uh, T.S. Eliot. So I think I, the love song of J. Alfred Prufrock uh, was so interesting to me. Um, I think in many ways, uh, the, the themes, uh, how philosophical it was and how free it, it seemed to me at that time. Um, and uh, probably like many people, I, I didn't know that poetry could be like that. Um, in fact, sort of somewhat recently, uh, I, I thought to uh, go back to uh, T.S. Eliot and uh, was surprised that I knew most of that poem, um, you know, as I was reading it, um, you know, almost could recite it by heart. And uh, then just started looking at the four quartets again, which I highly recommend. Um, you know, it's a really hard question uh, to ask a poet because I need to look on my uh, night table. <laughs> but um, I'm, I, I, just, I'm, I just read a wonderful book by Ellen Bass, which is called Indigo. Uh, in fact, I'm working on an interview with her, and so I'm, I'm, I've really um, uh, read it several times, and I'm really deep into thinking about uh, her work. Um, Louise Glick is always uh, a favorite of mine um, that I really enjoyed uh, from early on uh, as a young poet. Uh, the work of uh, Lucille Clifton, um, uh, also another Santa Fe poet who inspired me and also uh, who I uh, took some classes with. In the, in the community when I was younger, Arthur Z. Um, you know, so many. I just read a really interesting book by Victoria Chang uh, called Obit. Um, 
and uh, yeah, I have, uh, you know, it, it, you. It, it's pretty endless. Yeah. Um, I, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit the other day, the three of us, when we were planning the show about um, what artist social action can do that is a little different, operates at a different level than political discourse, political debate, and um, reaches people in different ways, um, perhaps makes us more reflective and allows forms of communication that um, through channels that are not normally open to us. And I, um, I want to invite you, Elizabeth, and you, Jerry, from that Martian moon that your audio is coming from to continue to try to uh, tease out this question of, of how can we be responsive to this present moment? Um, it's crises, it's epidemics, um, uh, without engaging politics directly, but obliquely, you know, tangentially through the artwork that we do and the ways that we can engage each other in that way. Yeah, I think just um, offering uh, people the chance uh, to express themselves, you know, in a way that is uh, intimate and um, also uh, wide, you know, so uh, we work, I know for me, I work in groups, uh, but I'm really in the group, I'm working with an individual. So that's kind of a metaphor um, in a sense. Uh, each person in the group has the opportunity um, to share uh, their work um, and is invited into a conversation um, that is only better if everybody participates. So uh, I think that, you know, is, is, is kind of for me what, it, what social action means that, uh, you know, we're going into a community and uh, working intimately with individuals in the bigger picture. And it just, like I said earlier, it just kind of lights up the board, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it, it, I think just a few weeks ago, and I'm, and I'm going back again on Friday uh, to a park uh, by the Youth Works facility, which is on South Street, and um, um, with a, a group of teenagers, uh, 12 of them, and then a few other uh, teenagers uh, wanted to join in the group uh, because the project won't be reaching their school, unfortunately. So I've included them as well. So um, it was amazing a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there were some uh, young people in, in, in the workshop who just uh, were, I, I couldn't believe uh, their poems. They were, it was like they just are writing poems every day and studying poetry. They were so inspired. And like I said already, you know, you just, uh, you, I can present a few poems, talk about a few poems, and then it seems almost instantly I could say, write a poem and, and someone can. So especially a younger person, um, and so inhibitions just kind of drop away. And uh, so were the masks, they were kind of falling off. But you know, it's basically impossible to teach with a mask on because as you talk, it just drops. But because the park is, is a good size and there's lots of shade trees, we were able to spread out. And um, the kids from YouthWorks work together every day. So they, they kind of can be close together without too much worry. They're very careful over there. And, um, Anyway, so uh, I guess that's. Are there any questions maybe from the audience or? Yeah, I, was just, uh, I was just inviting Jerry to un unmute and I think he was. Yeah, here I am. I hope you can hear me okay. Yes. Um, this idea of social action or social engagement, especially the social engagement as an arts practice is a relatively new jargon. But I guess if you look back to the very origins of art in the caves, there was definitely a culture building going on inside that cave. I'm pretty damn sure of it, though nobody was there to witness it. They didn't have any Zoom meetings. But uh, at any rate, uh, I think just 
there's two aspects that we do in Axel. And one is we invite artists to do their shows and to do whatever work they want to do. And by revealing themselves in the unusual places that Axel parks, that is a social activity just in itself. Art, because for the most part, people look at it or experience and discuss it and talk about it and enjoy it together. That too is a social action that art automatically provides. Um, Axel, we have created our own projects that uh, build upon relationships. <laughs> and then he was gone. Oh, <laughs> Am I allowed as her father to say anything? No, Arthur, no. Fathers are not allowed to give any feedback to their daughters once they become poet laureates. Isn't that? <laughs> I, that's what I've been told. Oh, there's Jerry. Jerry's back. Jerry's back. And yes, Arthur, and okay. then we will go, we will go to the, the, the patriarch of the Jacobson clan. So at any rate, Axel has created several projects in which we build relationships with the community in order to create or complete the show. We've done uh, a couple of poetry projects where we had open calls for people to uh, uh, write uh, haiku and, and have artists illustrate those haiku. Uh, we did a Renga project, which is another poetry-based project where uh, kind of like the um, exquisite course that it's done with poetry. So we combined the artwork and one artist responds to the previous artist who's, and it just keeps on going. Uh, same with a poem. Somebody writes a uh, stanza, the next poet responds to that stanza, the next poet responds to that stanza. This uh, builds a relationship while the art is being made. Uh, we've done this more recently. We've done phot photography projects where we went around the state and asked people to come into the axle van, have their photograph taken with an object that is significant to them. So they're creating their own portrait with an object that is significant to them. Uh, and um, so the, these are the uh, a couple of art actions that involve social integration uh, and relationship under a potato project where we had people do potato prints and buy the potatoes, buy all the stuff to make the print, the stuff, the all the things like spiral or jelly or so as soon as the potato, as soon as the potato, I'm going to jump in just for a second. Potato. We the herbs and spices, and we made those potato soup. Uh oh, did you lose me again? Yeah. You were doing great, and then we, you, it, it the, the audio just um, changed. Oh my gosh. That's okay. We may we're, just have to do this over again. We'll, we'll do it over again. We'll do it over again. Um, Mr. Jacobson, uh, Arthur, I think you were, you were going to uh, say something a minute ago. Well, I want you to know everybody that everything that Liz ah. is, is that she's done it all on her own. <laughs> she, she, I couldn't be prouder. She looks absolutely terrific today. Uh, can you ask a question? Just ask a question, please. This is why Let's I don't do. have my family on, on these calls. Well, she's got her whole family please, on. Dad, 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 please, can you what? ask a question? Just ask a question. When, when did you get interested in poetry? When did you start writing it? Uh, well, you know, Dad, actually, I started writing when I was, um, I think, like in first or second grade. I made a little book in first grade or second grade, a little triangle book. And we, uh, Mom took me to the uh, fabric store, and uh, we made the book in class, and I started writing little poems and uh, putting it in there. So thank you, Dad. I'll talk to you later. Do you still have the book? Yeah, I do. Uh, the Jacobson family will be appearing in downtown Santa Fe together for the next few weeks. Um, I, uh, 
pivoting back to the idea of social action, I, I wonder if social action is new discipline, terminological speak for something that art and public art has done since the Greeks, if not before, um, which is to public, publicly witness and mediate civic thought and conflict. Is there anything that art as social action today is doing that is uniquely different, do you think, than what art has done from the beginning? You know, that's a really interesting question and I like the way uh, you're thinking about it. And I mean, my first re reaction is probably not, um, but also humans love to uh, term things and categorize things and you know put things in their place. And so it's just a way now with so many definitions trying to explain ourselves to ourselves what we're actually doing. And kind of in a way it's uh, almost self-congratulatory you know, um, so I generally don't like terms, but I do like the term social action because, you know, it explains exactly what it is, which is community activity. And, um, and I think it's helpful now because there's so many of us, you know, populating this planet. And so um, by saying that we're doing social action, I think it's inclusive. Right. Yeah. So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have just a couple of more minutes, and if there's anyone who's watching that would like to see what their audio sounds like on Zoom. Uh, yeah. Or Matt, anyone who's written in. Or suddenly we're all alone. Um, I... Sorry, Ken, there, I don't have any... Any further questions, but I know Elizabeth was um, had mentioned she had one more poem that she wanted to close with. Maybe maybe we could go ahead and, and move to oh, that. Okay. Yeah. A wonderful way to close. Thank you. And yes. Oh, thank you, Matt. That's very nice. And uh, earlier, um, Ken asked me, um, uh, you know, about uh, my poetry practice and um, not a, well, not exactly what it's what it is to be a poet uh, or what it is for me. So uh, this is an Ars Poetica, which is essentially um, uh, a poem uh, about poetry. And, um, and, and this is a poem uh, that I wrote, uh, which explains um, to me sort of what poetry is for me. So uh, it's called Ars Poetica with Pine Roots. Can I know what I am? I am a host for many. Do I know why I make these things? This morning, the air smelled of pine roots, spreading their ballads into the earth. Expect there will be a sunrise over steaming mountains. Expect there will be no reason to empty what fills and fills, to spend whole days after whole days pushing words around on paper, to eat one bitter blackberry, then another from the same bush, and the eighth one is sweet. Each long exhale unwinds a confession, each foot slog into the far back woods, paradise. Wow, thank you. Thank you again so much. Um, it's, it's such a privilege to have both of you on program. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I promise you we will work with the video and the audio that we have and try to uh, edit it and include the, the clip from Axel with its audio and see what we can get up on our YouTube channel. Um, but I hope that as our technology evolves and gets better that we can have both of you back again. And in the meantime, I want to encourage everyone watching this um, to support Elizabeth's writing uh, through purchase of her books and reading her poetry online and checking out Axel Contemporary at their website and live and in person on the streets and parks of uh, the Santa Fe area. I can't wait to get up there. Um, thank you to you, Arthur Jacobson. You must be very proud of your daughter. It's nice to see you on our program. Thank you to Matt, my co-host. 
Thank you to the National Endowment for the Arts for supporting our work and for the New Mexico Humanities Council for giving me the opportunity to be your host. Um, please stay in tune with our website at nmhumanities.org for our future guests on this program and others, um, including uh, the podcast Augmented Humanity, which is really awesome and cool. And um, for other other programs that we do, Matt, am I forgetting anything that I should also be mentioning? I don't. Uh, I don't think so. Um, yeah, we have uh, starting conversations every Wednesday at five p.m. and and our augmented humanity, like Ken said, comes out on um, uh, uh, Mondays every week. And hopefully we'll be uh, getting some special airtime on KUNM, uh, which uh, does uh, help us record Augmented Humanity podcast. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, we're good to go. If you want more information on the Humanities Council, definitely check out our social media accounts or our website. We just posted a um, our August newsletter, so you can get ton more information about different things that we're doing in grants, um, uh, grant funding, and uh, just different sorts of activity that the Humanities Council is doing um, through that uh, e-newsletter. But I'll kick it back to you, Ken, to uh, take us off there. Thank you, Mellon Funded Poet Laureate of Santa Fe, Elizabeth Jacobson, and Jerry Wellman of Axel Contemporary. Thanks so much again for being our guests. Best of luck to you both. And uh, We'd like to get updates about the project soon. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everyone.